Hey Josh, welcome back to the Ramos and Ramos Studios. John, always happy to be here. And anytime someone has questions, anything related to what we do as a firm, we are always happy to help and try to offer some advice. So always happy to be here. All right. So the first question I have is what is considered a personal injury? Well, everyone always asks, hey, do I have a personal injury case? So the questions that we ask the uh, clients or potential clients or people who are injured is in order to have a personal injury case, the question is, are you seriously injured? And then the second question is, is who's at fault for the injury? So in order to have a case, you have to have a pretty serious injury. And also on top of it, you have to have someone else at fault, like such as did someone rear end me or did someone negligently keep keep uh, their property to a certain level that caused you to trip like a, a really damaged sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So if you have someone at fault and you have a serious injury, that's a personal injury case. All right, that's cool. Um, the second question, what should I do after a personal injury accident? Well, uh, you know, first and foremost, you always wanna take care of yourself. Your number one goal is not to have a case. Your number one goal is to get better. And we here, my attorneys, we'd rather have you get better than be more injured and prolonged and have surgeries. So you always want to prepare to get to the emergency room or an immediate care to see a doctor. But while you're standing there, such as in a motor vehicle accident, mm -hmm. you always want to take some pictures of the accident to protect yourself. You get car placements, you get proof of the damages, because otherwise you have to wait six, seven months down the road until an insurance company finally turns these over. So you always want to take some pictures. You slip and fall on ice, take a picture of it because mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that they use is, oh, I think we salted, and that's a defense to a slip and fall on ice. But if you have pictures right after you slip and fell and you can see that there's no salt on the ground, that defeats that. So you always want to take some pictures of the accident as well. Yeah. All right. That makes a lot of sense. All right. The next question I have is, will my personal injury case go to trial? And that's, that's a good question because a lot of people, the reason why they don't want to pursue a case is because they're definitely afraid of getting in front of a jury and having to tell their side of the story. But realistically, only about half of 1% act cases actually go to trial. You know, most of these cases in New York, at least, they are litigated or they're settled before you even sue the person just between you and the insurance company. Or if you sue it, the worst thing you have to do is do a deposition where another attorney asks you what happened in the accident. That's 99.5% of cases that don't go to trial. Right. And so generally speaking, you don't have to go to trial. And I always tell people it's worth it to pursue a case just to see if we can actually get you justice for your accident. And if you, know, and if you decide you don't want to go to trial because you can't take, you know, it's not something you want to do, then that, that's fine. But in the meantime, you should get an attorney, whether it's us or someone else, just to kind of pursue. Wow. All right. Good, good information here. Um, Ah, here's one I would want to know. How much is my personal injury case worth? So we see a lot of these commercials about what's your case really worth. And, and quite frankly, there is no set answer. Like you can't go on to a mathematic table and say, this is what my doctor diagnosed me with. This is what, uh, how the accident occurred. And this is what my case is worth. I wish it would be that easy. But uh, unfortunately, it is not. Hmm. So what we have to do is we do an assessment of the client, see how you're doing, how you're feeling, how does it affect your daily life? And then when we look at your case, we look at who was the defendant? Because what if the defendant has no money and, and hits you in a car and only have a minimal insurance policy? You know, is it worth pursuing, let's say, if we went to front of a jury and we think we can get you $5 million and you get a judgment that's worth $5 million, do you want us to pursue that and spend all this money on trial that comes out of your case when all that defendant had was a $50,000 policy? Hmm. So each case, you know, and that's why all the attorney advertisements and the ethics rule require us to do this. It, uh, each case is 100% unique. And it's very important that you have an honest conversation with whoever your attorney is. You tell them about what happened. You tell them how it affects your daily life. You tell them about all the time you had to take off of work. And then the uh, defense attorney or the your attorney is going to actually look into this, investigate, see what kind of insurance policies are out there, see what kind of assets the, plan the defendant has. And we do a big assessment of that. And hopefully, you know, I always tell clients, I hope you're not that injured because I'd rather have you happy than having money. But in the event that if it's required that we end up going to trial and put hard work into this stuff, we will. But we have to do an individual assessment of each case to see what the case is worth. All right. All right. That makes sense. And our next question is, what happens 
if I'm partially at fault in the accident? So in New York State, it, well, the old rule used to be if you are 1% at fault, you get zero recovery. Hmm. So in New York State, we have what's called contributory negligence. And if you are, let's say, 50% at fault, so it's half and half. So it's half and half, and your case is worth a million dollars. Then if you went to a jury trial and they awarded money that said your total damages are 100%, but you're 50% at fault, or total damages are a million, but you're 50% at fault, then your award gets reduced by 50%. So if you're 5% at fault, your whatever your case value is gets reduced by 5%. Mm -hmm. If you're 10% at fault, your case value gets reduced by 10%. Other states, they have a rule where if you're 1% at fault, you get nothing. Or if you're above 50%, you get nothing. In your state, it's just equal percentages, and that's it. Okay. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. The next question is, how long does a personal injury lawsuit take to get a settlement? Well, that all depends on, in my opinion, what attorney you've hired. So if you hire an attorney who is known for sitting around on cases and not being aggressive, I've seen some of these cases last six, seven, eight years. Hmm. Ridiculous. You know, because they wait around for a three-year statute of limitations, uh, depending on what kind of case it is, and then they'll slowly respond to discovery requests over a year, which you can do in two months. So at our firm, we generally like to close things out sooner than later because I don't want you to sit around and have the stress of the case hanging out over your head. And most of the time, people after a year and a half, they kind of know where their injury is at. So you can kind of push that along. Okay. So it, it all depends on how aggressive your attorney is in trying to resolve this. So at our firm, we're very aggressive, but other firms, they're kind of, hey, I'm a little too busy and it might take a little bit longer, you know, but each, again, it depends on the attorney you hire. Great. Great. And we'll, uh, we'll finish up with this question. Uh, how long do I have to file a personal injury claim? So you would think, oh, if I'm injured, I have this many years. But that's not always the case. It all depends on what kind of case you have. So if you're um, injured by a, just an ordinary person who's not working for the government at the time, you know, generally speaking, on a negligence case, you have three years. If you have a personal injury case that results out of an assault, like someone beat, you know, punched you in the face and it was you know, some kind of bar fight and you, sh you, know, you did nothing wrong, mm -hmm. technically you might have a year to pursue it against that tortfeasor, the guy who was wrong. And then now if you were injured as a result of the government hurting you, you now have, and when I say the government, I mean New York and one of their municipalities, you generally have 30 days to file a claim and then, or 90 days to file a notice of claim. And then after that, you have a year to sue it. Hmm. So it's a year and 30 days. And then if it's against New York State directly, there's a whole new set of rules that come into play. That's why if you have an injury case, it's important to find an attorney who's experienced and knows this stuff and just sit down with them and have a talk to let them look into it. Because in the beginning of these cases, we all hope, at least I think of as far as personal injury attorneys are concerned, we all hope that you're not seriously injured. But in the meantime, we just want to protect those rights for you. And if this all goes away within a few months and you don't want to pursue it, great. At least we protected your rights. But if it turns out that it was something pretty serious and now it's affecting your life and your ability to pay mortgage, your ability to work, then at least you, since we preserve these rights, you then can pursue an action. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time, Josh. I appreciate you stopping in. All right. Always a pleasure. And let, let me know when the next time is going to be. All right. You got it.